Okay, so here we are again at the acoustic kitchen in Dublin. So <clears throat> we travelled over to the north side of town today to meet a man here called Banjo Bill Whelan. And you're going to see in a few minutes why they call him that. Over to you, Bill. Okay, well, this, I'm going to illustrate the start of this with the, the earliest banjo that I, I have. And it's a copy of a Joel Sweeney banjo which is the original sort of, the, the nearest thing to the original American version of an, an African instrument called a conting. But it's made from, what's interesting about it is that it's made from a baron. The baron was made by Maliki Cairns. I think he must have been in London at the time because since then, a fellow called Pete Stanley, who's a kind of a well-known bluegrass banjo player and banjo historian in, in London, made a neck for it. But he made a neck... It's a copy of a famous painting from 1843 or something. And this is a tack head banjo. And it's 14 inch. That's a big pizza. Family size pizza. And it, it's... So it's as close as you get to the African sound. as you get to illustrating where the banjo evolved from then there's a kind of a more modern version that I play as well and it's um, made by a guy called John Bolan and it's he calls it the 1860 banjo and it, there's no 1860 banjo like it but it has elements of all the banjos that he came across from that period and it's got a, a nice mellow sound once again it's very African well Nile got strings on it and it's got a lovely mellow sound then the next one up that I have is a a cello banjo which was a, a, a kind of a modern day invention very big but I have steel strings on it originally would have had good strings and I'll just play a little tune on it called Boatman Pizza as well. Lovely sound. Yeah. Now there's a few other banjos I played. This is a, just a, a little throwaway banjo that I found one time. The neck was warped on it, so I got a fellow called Frank Tate to make a neck for me. But he, he's made several necks for me. He's a, a luthier here in Dublin. An absolutely excellent luthier. Has a huge reputation. But he, he he's made these to fit my hand. To just to, to suit the, the scale length that I like to play. But this is an A banjo, this one in particular. Most banjos like this are G banjos. So. I'll play a, a tune called Short and Bread. Back to the plantation times, and 
it's just as well I can't sing it's just as well because the words are very racist in it and um, also very sexist there's lots of sexual in innuendo in there in a lot of the songs that came from the plantations so um, we'll, le we'll leave them out anyhow uh, maybe I'll play a tune and Lee might accompany on the harmonica here playing a, it's a cowboy waltz it's called a very simple little waltz but it's got the cattle call at the start which is It's kind of used in lots of American cowboy pictures, cowboy movies and stuff. It's a very happy waltz, so you've got to, you got to picture some cowboy getting done off his horse with one leg shorter than the other and <laughs> waltz into that one. <coughs> um, there's a few other tunes that we used to play. There's another cowboy, actually another one called Buck and Dunn. It's also called Bob Tailed Mule, that we myself and Liam played once on a program on Tina G, I think, with the Oxo Boys, as they were. Uh, that's the uh, abridged version of it <clears throat> but uh, a buck and dun or a bobtail mule they're, they're, a dun is a, a, a type of pony I think yeah and, and, and in cowboy lingo dun the, refers uh, to brown doesn't it yeah yeah like so, an Irish yeah <laughs> now the style I play is, is kind of claw hammer playing everything I play is down strokes I don't do any picking I'm not a, a picker they, they sort of say that the down stroke originated in Africa because it's very common it, commonly played by Africa, African lute players and sort of um, people who play instruments that, that go across unlike the harp players who pick the, the, the chorus and those instruments the, 
the lute type instruments are hit hit down with the back of the nails and that's that's the style I play which is very Appalachian very it's kind of developed up in the Appalachians I play a, a modal tune and just to illustrate one of the families of tunes that are played up in the Appalachians but it's very atmospheric and it's got that sound that high lonesome sound in it Basically, the, the tune Pretty Polly, Bob Dylan had made a version of it and he sang it called Hollis Brown. But it's a typical mountainy murder ballad air or rhythm that the, the English song sort of repertoire was used in the States, but it was the Irish and Scottish tunes that were used in the Appalachians. But they, they hung on to the, the vocal tradition from the British Isles, as they call them. And um, lots of murder ballads and dark, dark 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 themes yeah. it's a pity you're not going to sing for us now well I'm going <laughs> to spare you that <laughs> get out of the kitchen and rattle those pots and pans ok this is a, a cello banjo again and it was kind of a parlour instrument it was used in banjo orchestras and banjo orchestras ranged right down from, from piccolo banjos right down to bass banjos and this is a cello now the music that it played was kind of written written music music written so it was called classic banjo in a way and people like Stephen Foster and those composers wrote music to suit it but it, it was influenced by the African uh, the music that they heard from the plantations so Hard Times Come Again No More which is one of the many tunes that's, that's well known over here I think people think Mary Black Rose or something but it was Stephen Foster <laughs> 